Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to my video on the new MacBook Pro ports. This is an explainer video. I'm gonna break down, hopefully in plain English, what these ports are, what they do, why people would want them in the first place. So whether you're actually shopping for one of these or you just wanna get educated or you're just curious, like, do I need these? This is the video for you. Now, before I start breaking down each of the individual ports, I feel like we just need a quick little history lesson. Back in 2015, with the MacBook, Apple began purging all ports but the USB-C. Then in 2016, the MacBook Pro lost all ports but the USB-C. It went USB-C exclusive. And this, of course, ushered in the dongle era. So if you wanted to use an HDMI or a USB-A accessory, you had to reach for a dongle. Or if you wanted to grab some files off of an SD card, you also had to grab a dongle. Now, MacBook Pro users in particular didn't like this. And Apple's rationale, the trade-off that it was pitching, was that your MacBook Pro is gonna be slightly thinner and lighter. But that was a trade-off that MacBook Pro users in particular just weren't on board with. Fast forward to 2021 and Apple has brought back every port that a demanding user would dream of having. MacBook Pros now come equipped with an SD card slot, an HDMI port, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, a MagSafe 3 port, and three Thunderbolt 4 slash USB-C ports. And actually I would probably say it's not just the pros that are gonna like these extra ports your average normal people are also gonna like having these extra ports too. It's like, if you can afford it, a lot of people, I've been hearing the feedback, they're just gonna upgrade just for those ports, regardless of the power of the MacBook Pro. Now, to make this happen, the new MacBook Pros had to get just a bit thicker, just a bit heavier, and the extra ports do play a role in adding that extra bulk, but it also comes from just having a bigger and nicer display that's part of it, having uh, some function keys now, extra keys instead of the touch bar, so et cetera, et cetera. There's some extra additions here on top of the ports, but the ports also contribute that make this heavier and thicker. And I'll just be honest, before we get into the ports, that's okay. This extra bulk is no problem because what it amounts to is a MacBook that's the incredible Hulk of laptops. It's basically my dream laptop. All right, well, let's get into the ports, starting with the SD port. Now, if you look on the specs page, it's not just an SD port, it's actually an SDXC port. Well, what does that mean? Well, I think we're all pretty familiar with SD cards. They're just little memory cards that let us transfer files from like a camera to our computer. Well, the XC here just stands for extended capacity, AKA it can just fit a lot more files, can store a lot more. And that makes sense because this is the MacBook Pro. And the nice thing is it's backwards compatible with SD HD and regular SD as well. Hey, if you're new around here, let me just take this opportunity to say, if you like the vibe of this video, why not hit subscribe? Because I got lots of Apple content hitting the channel all the time with the same style. Okay, moving on, let's hit the HDMI port. Now this is the one port where I think pro users might be able to complain just a little bit here because this is Apple's nicest laptop, but it's only HDMI 2.0 and not HDMI 2.1. And there's actually a bit of a significant difference. A bit of a significant. <laughs> So HDMI 2.0 will let you connect a monitor that's 4K resolution running at 60 Hertz. However, if you had 2.1, you'd be able to connect a 4K monitor running up to 120 Hertz. So what happens is, let's say you have a really nice 4K 120 Hertz screen just waiting around. You'd like to connect it here through the HDMI. If you connect it, what you're gonna get is a dumbed down version. It's only gonna connect at 60 Hertz. Also, you can't connect an 8K monitor to this HDMI port. Now I do wanna point out that the MacBook Pro has an amazing display just built right in. It's the Liquid Retina XDR display, which does run at 120 Hertz. Now, if a really demanding user happened to be slightly disappointed with the HDMI 2.0, what's not disappointing in any way, shape or form is that we have three Thunderbolt 4 slash USB-C ports. Now I know a lot of people out there are asking, what is the difference between USB-C and Thunderbolt 4? Well, USB-C USB-C is capable of not just transmitting data, so think plugging in an external drive and transferring files over, but it's also capable of delivering power. So the same port can not only move data, but it can charge your battery. 
which is pretty cool. Now, Thunderbolt 4 has transfer speeds of 40 gigabits per second, which is actually two times faster than USB-C, which is only 20. Funnily enough though, Thunderbolt 4 is not any faster than Thunderbolt 3. It's really more about display options. Basically, the Thunderbolt 4 ports are gonna let you connect up to two external displays with 6K resolution at 60 hertz with the new M1 Pro chip, or up to three external displays with up to 6K resolution and one external display with up to 4K resolution at 60 hertz with the M1 Max. And if you have a display port monitor, you can get that connected here. And what it amounts to is that you can drive an absolutely insane looking and also insanely useful desktop setup with these Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now there's a headphone jack here and we have to talk about it because it's not really just a headphone jack. And it's kind of funny because Apple's really been pushing for this wireless future. We have the AirPods Max, which are awesome. I love mine by the way, but they're not for every professional out there, just so you know. And we have AirPods and those are the things that I'm gonna use with my MacBook Pro for video editing all day and all night. But for people who are like audio engineers who work in logic, for instance. Basically, anybody who's working with high impedance wired headphones that are very power hungry, they can now plug right in to this headphone jack without having to use any kind of external amp. So you might be thinking, well, there's a lot of overkill here. That's not my job, or I wouldn't use, you know, four displays. But the point is, there's a lot of options here. And this can fit and adapt to so many different workflows without you having to adapt to the MacBook Pro. And that's what's really key here. All right, let's talk about MagSafe. We have a MagSafe 3 port here. And I just wanna remind you, from 2006 to 2016, all MacBooks had MagSafe. And it was really great because you could just pop the MagSafe cord in and made a really satisfying snap and you knew that you were powering. And then if you tripped over the cord, for instance, or somebody else did while it was plugged in, it wouldn't bring the whole laptop down crashing with it. So it made sense, it was a cool thing. And then in 2016, along with all the other ports that also bit the dust, MagSafe disappeared. And it's too bad, but it's back now. It's MagSafe 3, and that means that it's faster. How fast? I mean, it's pretty impressive. You can actually go from 0% charged to 50% charged in 30 minutes, which is pretty awesome. Now to get those speeds, you gotta be using a powerful enough adapter. So the 14 inch comes with a 67 or 96 watt adapter, depending on the config that you go with, while the 16 inch comes with a brand new 140 watt adapter, which is definitely the craziest adapter that Apple's ever made. It's fast, it's powerful, and yes, is pro. So there you go. That's my breakdown of these ports, what they mean, why they matter. Hopefully you now understand if you didn't just learn something, whether or not these ports can matter to you, if you can make use of them, if you think you can, I'll drop some links so you can check out prices down below, get your machine configured and yeah, they're affiliate links because that's how things work here on YouTube. Also, Make sure to check out my M1 Pro versus M1 Max in plain English explainer video that came out last week. And I think that would help you in your buying process as well. I'll link it up for you. Check out at Daily Tech, spelled Daily TKK on Instagram and Twitter. Lots of great stuff hitting those platforms that doesn't show up here on YouTube. So I'd love to connect with you there. And I got some other stuff happening around here. Some exciting stuff from recent announcements that's gonna be hitting soon. So get yourself subscribed and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.